In this era of misinformation, lies, and conspiracies, there's only news parody shows left that people can trust. The Beaumont holds this responsibility of keeping the general public informed with great honor, and today we shall use it to document an election so turbulent we named this video after it. Welcome to a very special deep dive from the Beaumont Bulletin. We are taking a look at the turbulent 2020 election that has brought such joys as the Capitol riots, flies on the heads of old men, and those annoying video game Biden ads. This election was monumental for a variety of reasons. Not only did it take place during a pandemic, but it was also the most voted in election of all time. And yet, only 66.3% of eligible voters actually participated in this election. That's 80 million people who didn't vote. To put that into perspective, the presidential election with the second highest voter turnout at 65.7% was in 1908, when America had only 88 million citizens and only a very limited group of people could vote. So if you think about it in those terms, that's an entire country not voting for you. Can you imagine that? I know the Green Party can. The number of obstacles people had to overcome in order to vote in 2020 is just as impressive as the voter turnout. Whether dealing with armed vigilantes at the polls, the threat of COVID, the risk of mail-in votes not being, man being manipulated, or the frequently changing and convoluted voting laws, more voters than ever made sure they exercised their right to vote. And yet after all that, we still had to wait the amount of time that it takes to watch all 17 seasons of Grey's Anatomy to find out the results. Which, spoiler alert, Joe Biden won the election in what was one of the most stressful and close-cut races any of us will hopefully ever see. To say that the process was turbulent would be an understatement, but we're going to use it because it's already the title of this video. Trump and his goonies felt like those red shells in Mario Kart your friend gets when they're in second place and you're just about to cross the finish line. Every single time by the Biden campaign looked to be in the clear, America began to hear that all too familiar sound. To knock a sitting president out before they've even had their second term is no easy feat. And that's not even factoring in the cult-like nature of Trump's following. But still, Biden prevailed despite every obstacle put before him. All right, enough hero talk. We'll break out the slander later on. So watch yourself, Sleepy Joe. Now about the Cheeto Man. Do you know how bad of a candidate you have to be to lose when you had every possible advantage? That's like blowing a 32-point lead in the Super Bowl after shooting every player on the opposing team in the hip. There hasn't been an L of this magnitude since Australia lost a war to emus. Although the election is a sore spot for a lot of Americans, and we need more time to recover, here is a look at the monumental failure of the previous administration. After Donald Trump assumed office in 2017, he immediately filed for re-election. What followed was four years living in hell, with the added dread of knowing that ultimately we could spend another four years with this man as the king of the underworld. The Trump years kind of felt like when you have a substitute teacher and they make up all these new rules and you're like, ah, oh, I want Mrs. Johnson back. And then when Mrs. Johnson comes back, you're like, oh yeah, this is still school and it sucks. There's a lot to unpack here. So let's get started. So like a valedictorian delivering a speech on graduation day, I present to you, class of 2021, the most memorable moments from the past four years. You know, it's hard to pick just one from these unforgettable times, but possibly the most notable is the fact that Donald Trump was the first president to be impeached twice. That's right. The first day of reckoning was on December 18th, 2019. The House voted to impeach him after he was accused of soliciting foreign interference for the 2020 election. You see, I like to, to describe it as kind of like an episode of Survivor. Trump saw Biden as a threat, so he decided to make an alliance with the Ukraine so that they could blindside Biden at tribal council, but turns out democracy got in the way. The tribe has spoken, Don. But if you don't speak Survivor, um, he basically tried to illegally take Biden down in the 2020 election, but was caught red-handed. So he was impeached but the Senate acquitted him in February of 2020. That wasn't it for Donnie though. His second day of reckoning came about a year later when he was accused of inciting an insurrection in regards to Capitol riots, but we will get to that later. Getting impeached isn't the only thing that Donald Trump is really good at. He's also a really good liar. 
In fact, according to the Washington Post, he made more than 20,000 lies or misleading statements over the course of his time in office. If Trump was an early 2000s movie starring Amanda Bynes, as much as he'd like to be Hairspray, he would be Big Fat Liar. There's a lot to go through, but one of his favorite fibs was that the economy is the best in history. This is not even close to being true, and it never has been either. There are plenty of periods in U.S. history where the economy was better than it was at any point in his presidency. But he said it so much that his followers actually believed it. And a lot of his lives were like that. They were believed by, and they were completely false. In a sense, he sort of created his own echo chamber of lies that became the truth because they were the only thing being said. It got so bad that some of his lies didn't even seem to have a purpose. They were just weird and didn't make any sense. At one point, he said you need an ID to buy cereal. He said that windmills cause cancer. There's so much, but that's being nitpicky. His bigger lies surrounding climate change and immigration and so many more had real and damaging effects. Aside from the things he said, it's also important to note the type of people that Trump surrounded himself with. The Trump years basically turned the White House into a Trump family reunion 24-7. But instead of awkward conversations over potato salad, they were running the country. It was nepotism central at the White House. Trump employed lots of not only his family, but also his friends to be staffers and cabinet members. And when people crossed him, they were out. Trump seemed to go through cabinet members like he went through Diet Cokes, just one after the other. Speaking of... Huh. Thank you. You know, I kind of see why he does this, although I would never do diet. This is Cherry Coke. It's really refreshing though. So, we've got two impeachments, thousands of lies, and a president who cycles through staffers like he does his wives. The last thing I will say about this man is that he really let down the country in an astronomical sense in his last year. His response to COVID was so incredibly incompetent that thousands of people needlessly died. He refused to wear a mask. He spread misinformation and he refused to acknowledge the existence of the virus when he knew months in advance before the rest of the country. His response was so uncoordinated that it almost seemed intentional. This was enough of a reason to get him out of office, but there is so much more that this man did. So much more, in fact, that we've created a list of dishonorable mentions because I really don't have enough time to sit here and explain everything that he did during his administration. So here you go. I present to you the rest of the atrocities of the past four years. Okay, even with all of this, Trump still has a pretty solid base going into the election. Let's take a look at that. As the election approached, people paid attention with worry and anticipation, wondering how this election would go or if it could even function normally. After all, even in the 2016 election, Donald Trump mentioned that he might not accept the outcome. Sir, that you will absolutely accept the result of this election. I will look at it at the time. I'm not looking at anything now. I'll look at it at the time. What I've seen, what I've seen is so bad. First of all, the media is so dishonest and so corrupt, and the pile-on is so amazing. The New York Times actually wrote an article about it that they don't even care. It's so dishonest, and they've poisoned the minds of the voters. But unfortunately for them, I think the voters are seeing through it. I think they're going to see through it. We'll find out on November 8th, but I think they're going to see but, through but, it. But, she shouldn't be allowed to run. It's cro it, she's, she's guilty of a very, very serious crime. She should not be allowed to run. And just in that respect, I say it's rigged because she but, should but, never, Chris, she should never have been allowed to run for the presidency based on what she did with emails and so many other but, things. But, sir, I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. Well, okay? Chris, let me respond to that because that's horrifying. Let's take a closer look at everything that went down during the 2020 election. Firstly, the months leading up to the election were filled with more confusion than all, pe than all the pieces of three different jigsaw puzzles dumped into one pile. 
Misinformation was spreading like wildfire. Voting rules were changing and fast food brands introduced their new combo meals, french fries, and fake voter sympathy. Keeping on brand with his first campaign, Trump spent a lot of time trying to convince people that the election was rigged. Whether it was mail-in votes or just the election in general, Trump wanted everyone to know that he thought it was fake and only some of the votes should even be counted. His message worked. And according to Reuters, about half of all Republicans believe Donald Trump rightfully won the U.S. election and that it was stolen from him by widespread voter fraud that favored Democratic president-elect Joe Biden. Okay, time out. What is rightfully won? I mean, either you win or you lose. A middle school basketball team can show more sportsmanship than that. Anyway. The widespread idea that Biden had lost only gained momentum and complexity among Trump supporters and Republicans. Partly due to the pandemic, a lot of this was on the internet. In addition to being your one-stop shop for all things conspiracy and Illuminati, Reddit and Parler are also perfect for plotting against the government. These apps provide a space where the plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer was made and along with the plan to storm the Capitol on January 6th. Hundreds of people rioted during this event at the Capitol building and some broke into the Capitol. Many had guns. It shouldn't have come to this. Violence is not the answer just because your party lost. Creating loopholes and just plain cheating to prevent your team from losing is unacceptable. Another important thing to note is that the source of a lot of this conspiracy leading to this event was, in a, was from an anonymous poster called Q. And this is a little complicated, but we'll go into it. Um, there were a significant number of people at this riot who were followers of QAnon, which is basically astrology for right-wingers. On whatever website will allow it, an anonymous source named Q will basically post these cryptic messages that are left to be interpreted by an audience that awaits a post from their beloved Q with bated breath. Just like horoscopes. I'm serious. But instead of making teens Google their compatibility with their crush's sign, QAnon encourages violence. And the idea that this election is rigged. And the idea that people eat babies. It's a lot. As if the story of the 2020 election season wasn't enough, even more crazy things happened between November 4th and the inauguration. The votes were being counted slower than a snail's pace, yet the energy was always high. Looking at where we are with one week to go until we count the votes. Advantage Joe Biden, 290 electoral votes in our outlook right now, takes 270 to win. Dark blue, solid Biden. Light blue, lean Biden, same. Solid red, solid Trump, light red. Texas leans Trump a week to election day. That tells you all you need to know about the very different landscape. Where's the president going today? He's going here and here and here. 27 electoral votes that were part of the Trump surprise upset four years ago, all lean Joe Biden right now. Anyway, after the incredible intense races in Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, it seemed like the election had ended. But why would anything work the way it's supposed to? Biden was confirmed as the winner seven times. That's right, because six times wasn't enough to convince the country to stop yelling and just listen. The US is a toddler, and you have to keep repeating yourself for it to retain anything. New president. No, you can't have another cookie. New president. And after this three-month election shit show ended, America started fresh with a brand new government that was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and ready to get stuff done. I'm just kidding, I know you didn't believe me. Um, America went back to its comforting, truest self, not getting anything done and being a giant menace. Let's look at Biden's first few months as president. Yay! Wake up, Joe. Wake up. Come on, Joe. Wake up. All right, he's up. Hi, buddy. Congratulations. You're the president. Yay, good job, you did it. Now let's talk about what the people are expecting from you. First of all, no more dog emails, okay? My God, nobody cares if Spot or Rex or whatever shit himself, okay? I want to see you making policies. Secondly, this is the presidency, not a giant photo op. We are so happy that you're being active and getting your steps in, but make sure that those agile strides are taking you to the work floor and not the golf course. America's already had enough cheeseburgers on the putting green. And finally, 
don't forget that we know everything that you and Paul Blart have done before this. This is not a fresh start. This is a new job, and we will be expecting a lot from you. As far as administration's promising things and following through on them goes, the Biden administration is actually doing pretty well. As they stated what happened, America has rejoined the Paris Climate Agreement, we've revised the ban on transgender people in the military, we've gotten rid of the Muslim travel ban, and among so many other things. We've also had a record-smashing vaccine with over 100 million Americans now vaccinated. Because of these achievements, the Beaumont would like to present the Biden administration with one of our most coveted awards. This is the golly gee willikers American government you actually did your job for once award. Congratulations to all the blood-sucking parasites who will for sure hold this award with pride. And for Biden, it'll look good next to the Corvette. I'm sorry, Joe, but casting for Fast and Furious 15 is already through. With the Biden administration flipping Trump's executive orders like burgers at a jack-in-the-box, a lot of good change started to take place. And fast. This isn't to say that the administration was immune to the usual pitfalls of holding the highest office in the country. In what seems like record time, America was back to its pursuit of happiness. And by that, I mean the pursuit of oil. Despite their various claims regarding a focus on clean energy and fossil fuels, the Biden administration found their hands deep inside the Middle East cookie jar once again, with bombing raids occurring all over Syria adding to the list of hypocritical occurrences in the White House, the Biden administration recently laid off dozens of employees due to marijuana use, despite Kamala Harris admitting in an interview that she has tried weed and supports its legalization. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like in and I, and I inhaled. I did, in, I did, did inhale. inhale. <laughs> did inhale. Okay. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> but yes. At the time, those comments sparked pushback saying she admitted to smoking weed before locking people up for it. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. Which is an awfully similar scenario to our favorite soon-to-be next Iron Man or Lex Luthor, we can't tell. For those of you concerned about our harsh words regarding the current sitting president, we at the Beaumont offer this as our statement. After the drama of this entire election, it is clear that Biden was the best choice in 2020. But that doesn't mean that he's going to be a great president. I mean, the bar is six feet under after Trump. So yes, we are going to criticize Biden. And you should too, because he's a person and not a god. We're not going to idolize him because we know that he can and will do wrong. When you glorify someone to the point of cult status, their misdeeds fall on deaf ears and horrid atrocities fly by without regard. Criticizing a politician who you felt has done something wrong is not blasphemous. It's your right as a citizen. Dare we say, it's your civic duty as a citizen. Politicians are called public servants for a reason. You have elected them to serve you and your community. Therefore, we will continue to criticize Biden and any other politician who does wrong towards the American people and the world, regardless of who they are. So now we say as one voice, Will he actually carry out what he promised during his campaign, such as canceling student loan debt, raising the minimum wage, effectively ending COVID, improving health care, and so much more? Or will he continue the tradition of presidents falling short? Only time will tell. Nevertheless, I think we can all agree that any candidate is better than one that drinks Diet Coke 24-7. Elect one that drinks cherry. I mean, seriously, Diet Coke is actually worse for you than regular Coke. It's like saying you'll eat a salad instead of a burger and then drenching it in ranch dressing. I do that all the time, but I don't drink Diet Coke. The times we are in are rapid and they're scary. Police brutality is more prevalent than ever. Racism continues to come to light and the economy needs rapid growth after several lockdowns. Now more than ever, we need an effective leader to take all these challenges on. We will find out in time if Biden is the one to do that. Thank you so much for watching the Beaumont Bulletin. Congrats for making it to the end. Now make sure you watch our best videos right here. Watch our newest videos up there and make sure you subscribe. 
And um, I guess you can hit that notification bell. I don't know what that means, but I hear people say it a lot on YouTube. Now here I am, and on YouTube and an end screen. And here you are watching me. What a world we live in. This is crazy. Just, just, yeah, subscribe, dude.